Stephen Hawking has stated that he believes life originating on other planets is perfectly rational because our galaxy is just one out of 100 billion. And although he admits the chance of life arising spontaneously is very small, he does not feel that this is a problem for his theory. It's like winning a lottery, he claims. Although the odds are astronomical, most weeks someone hits the jackpot. Others have claimed that like the lottery, although the odds that you will win is very small, the odds that someone will win is almost a certainty. How is it that with the incredible odds against winning the lottery, someone always manages to do so? Well, look at it this way. Say we have five cards. All but one have you lose written on them. And one card says you win. All the cards are shuffled face down. And one person draws a card from the top. The odds of that person winning are one in five. But say we have five people drawing a card. The odds are still 1 in 5 for each person to win, but the odds are also 100% that someone will win. That's all fine and good for the lottery, but what are the chances of life arising spontaneously somewhere in the universe? Life is very complex and made up of many components. Take a protein, for instance. Proteins are what make up the structure of living cells, and without them, we would not exist. They are responsible for such functions as catalyzing metabolic reactions, DNA replication, responding to stimuli, and transporting molecules from one location to another. Proteins differ from one another primarily in their sequence of amino acids. They are, at their simplest form, a chain of amino acid residues that can vary in lengths from just 20 amino acids to over 30,000. And there are 20 different amino acids found in proteins. Each link in the chain could have any one of these amino acids. The typical enzyme is around 200 amino acids long and is a form of a protein that catalyzes metabolic reactions. It is essential to life, so we will use it as our basis to determine the odds of a protein arising spontaneously in the universe. You can think of a protein like a password. A password is more secure the longer it is. Hackers try many methods to crack passwords. If a hacker can't get your password by an easier method, they may resort to what is called brute forcing. This is the least preferred method because it can be long and processor intensive and may even be impossible. And even when brute forcing a password, a hacker doesn't do so aimlessly but directs his blows so as to be more likely to get a hit. Instead of trying random characters, they use passwords that are statistically used more frequently than others. Then, if those don't work, they try the lesser likely passwords. To try to brute force a password using random characters could prove impossible if the password is too long, because there wouldn't be enough time to try all the possible combinations of characters in a person's lifetime. To illustrate, take these four balls. Imagine this is a password. If you look at this number, we see 9,999 possibilities. But really, since we are using 0, 2, we actually have 10,000 possible combinations. Another way we could figure this is by taking the number of possibilities for each ball, which is 0 through 9, so there are 10, and putting it to the power of 4. How does this relate to a protein? Well, imagine these balls are amino acids, and instead of 10 possible digits for each ball, there would be 20. Now, if our chain was only 4 amino acids long, then there would be 160,000 possible combinations of amino acids. If a hacker was attempting to crack this password at one attempt per second, that would be 60 attempts per minute, and it would take over 44 hours to go through all the possible combinations. But what if we add just one more amino acid? That number increases exponentially from 160,000 to 3,200,000. And now it would take our hacker over one month to exhaust all the possibilities. Add another amino acid 
and the number jumps to 64 million possibilities. And the amount of time it would take our hacker would be over two years. Add just four more amino acids for a total of 10, and it would take over 324,000 years. Now, keep in mind that the average enzyme has around 200 amino acids. So you can see the number of possible combinations would be incredible. But does that matter? After all, there are at least 100 billion galaxies all containing billions of stars and planets. So surely there are enough planets out there, at least a few of them would be able to produce an enzyme, right? I mean, after all, Stephen Hawking is an expert, and surely he has done the math and wouldn't just make a hasty generalization, correct? Well, let's actually do the math and see. First, we must find out how many planets there are. We obviously can't get an exact number, but scientists have estimated less than 6 trillion to be in the habitable zone. The habitable zone is the region around a star in which a planet can orbit and sustain liquid water. Now, we know that not every planet in the habitable zone is able to support life. There are many factors involved, but we will be generous here and assume that they all can. In fact, we will be even more generous and assume that there are many more planets than estimated. We will include all the estimated planets in the universe, even those that are not in the habitable zone. That number is estimated to be 10 to the 24th power. For our illustration, we will think of our planets each as a hacker trying to decode a protein. And the odds of getting an enzyme are 20 to the 200th power. But there's one more thing that we need to consider. Looking back at our illustration of the five cards, we just showed that there is only one possible winning card. But what if there are more than one? Say we have three. Then the odds are now three out of five chance of winning. Much better odds. So we need to know how many enzymes there are to determine the odds of getting a hit on one of them. Currently, there are around 70,000 known enzymes. So for good measure, we will increase that number to 1 trillion just to be safe. That will give us the odds of 1 trillion out of 20 to the 200th power of getting a hit. How big is 20 to the 200th power? It is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the 260th power, or to better illustrate, a 1 followed by 260 zeros. Scientists estimate the total number of all the atoms in all the known universe to be just 10 to the 80th power, so we can see this number is huge. So we know the odds are 1 trillion to 20 to the 200th power. Let's reduce this to the lowest common denominator. We do this by dividing both the top and bottom numbers by 1 trillion. This gives us this new number, which can also be shown in scientific notation like this. Or to give you a better idea, like this. So that means in order to get a protein, each hacker or planet has a 1 out of this many chance of winning. These are the odds. Now just like the hacker who attempts one time per second, how many times are our hackers or planets going to try per second? Well to be generous, we will assume that every planet is made up entirely of amino acids and they are constantly swirling and linking up with each other. We'll use the Earth as a model and assume each planet is the same mass as the Earth. The Earth has an estimated 1.33 to the 50th power atoms. We will round that up to 10 to the 51st power. Then we will divide that by 200 to see the total number of possible enzymes that can be made at one time. Now we will assume every second this number of proteins are formed on every planet, but how long will it take to make a functional enzyme? Remember, each planet is nothing but a pool of amino acids. We will multiply 5 times 10 to the 48th power by the number of planets in the known universe to see how many attempts total are being made. Then we divide the odds by our new number. This gives us the maximum number of seconds it will take to exhaust all the possible combinations. How long is that many seconds? It is equal to this many years. 
Unfortunately, the universe is only estimated to be less than 15 billion years old. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. The age of the universe compared to the age the universe would need to be to acquire one enzyme. So we can see the age of the universe is significantly insufficient to have actually made even one enzyme, yet alone to have done this multiple times on the same planet within the short time span it had to do it in. We must remember, if a hacker was trying to crack this code, he would not try the same combination more than once. But in nature, there wouldn't be that restriction. Granted, nature wouldn't need to go through all the possible combinations before it got a hit, but even if it took only 10 to the 100th power of the time, there still hasn't been enough time to do it in. To me, this is overwhelming evidence that for life to occur spontaneously, it is impossible. It had to have had direction from an intelligent force. Even if the universe had unlimited number of planets, this would still be impossible, because once a planet made one enzyme, it would have to win that same impossible lottery at least 250 times in a row to make a functional living cell. Have you ever heard of someone winning the lottery 250 times in a row? At least you would have a better chance at winning the super lotto than this lottery. But then it would have to do even more impossible odds that I'm not even covering in this video. And uh, there's even more to, to a protein than its sequence of amino acids that give it its properties. It has to fold onto itself in a specific way. So that just adds to the complexity of it. Not to mention left and right-handed proteins, and uh, there are many other factors. Uh, so you, there's just too much, uh, too many factors to consider. And it, I, to me, it takes more faith uh, not to believe in a creator than to believe in one. And that's the science. I've had this discussion with others before, and they acknowledge this conundrum, but they don't offer any explanation for why they believe there is no creator. They simply state that although we don't understand everything now, that one day in the future, far in the future, we'll figure it out someday. Well, my friends, I'm not waiting on future evidence that hasn't presented itself yet. I'm going by the current evidence. If someone can prove to me something different, then I'll believe that. But until then, I will believe what the evidence right now tells me. I welcome any comments and discussion, but I will not tolerate rudeness, so let's keep the discussion scientific. If you think you have an explanation for the origin of life, then by all means, your comments are welcome, and you can put them in the uh, comment section below.